I haven't had a lot of time this week to work on the videos that I planned on working on, so hopefully this will suffice. Hello all you crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and this is a 3D model editing slash conversion tool that I make for use in Game Maker that I, um, I'm just gonna talk about a little today, because I find it useful, I hope other people find it useful. It's gotten a bunch of updates since the first time I uh, posted a video about this, so until I have more time to work on uh, real Game Maker videos, I'll just uh, toss this out there and hopefully some of you find it useful, because I find it quite a handy thing to have. Hey. So, uh, you can start off by, uh, for example, dragging and dropping a 3D object file from Windows Explorer to Game Maker. Uh, that can be either an old D three D slash GM mod file uh, that you would have used in the olden days of three uh, D models in Game Maker, or it can be a, a wavefront object. Uh, let me find a good one. So here's a Kenny Tree D three D, and this is one of a. If you're familiar with Kenny's three D three D model packs, this is a palm tree that can be found in one of them. It'll demonstrate the purpose fairly well, I hope. Um, if you want. Uh, you can also look for, for example, um, here is a chicken model uh, from the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Try not to accidentally attack it if you don't want everyone in Riverwood to be calling for your blood. And now let's talk about some of the things that you can do with some of these files. So, um, different 3D model authoring tools have different ideas of what the up vector should be, of what the, uh, the up direction should be in 3D space. A lot of people think it should be the y-axis. I personally think it should be the z-axis. Uh, the z-axis tends to get a lot of attention um, in 3D and Game Maker because, um, well, the xy plane is the uh, basically the floor of the room editor, and if you have z coming out of that as the third axis, your up axis would be z. And if you want to rotate the up axis in your uh, 3D model, you can click the rotate up axis button. If you want to rotate the up axis and uh, swap from left-handed to right-handed or from right-handed to left-handed coordinate systems, you can use that button instead. And uh, you can do things such as apply a transformation to a 3D model if you want, for example, the chicken to actually be um, smaller than the palm tree. Uh, you can bake the transformation on the palm tree if that's a thing that you would uh, find helpful. Uh, you can also mess with the position, rotation, uh, parts of the transform information. Uh, if the wireframes are getting to be a little bit distracting, you can turn down the wireframes or turn them off completely. I'm going to turn them down to like a, uh, about a quarter here. And also mess with a bunch of other view settings. Uh, draw textures, yes or no. Uh, draw vertex colors, yes or no. Draw lighting, yes or no. I'm going to leave all those on right now, I think. Um, if you want to see a bounding box around the models, you can draw the physical bounding box like this. Uh, there's some other tools that you can use. You can uh, mirror across an axis if that's something that you would find helpful. Um, mirroring across the z-axis is a little dramatic. Uh, you can mess with the uh, the textures because sometimes when you import things into Game Maker, um, the textures get flipped upside down because Game Maker thinks textures should originate in the upper left, and some other things think they should originate in the bottom left. So if you run into a conversion issue, you can use flip texture vertically, and hopefully. That would no longer be a problem. If you want to mess with 3D materials, at least basic materials, such as uh, diffuse uh, colors information, um, you can hit the materials button down here. Uh, the chicken that I imported only has one material in it that comes with it. But if you have something fancier, and uh, the, um, the Game Maker model that I brought in doesn't have any texture at all, this is just vertex colors. Um, if I were to, for example, use something a little bit more elaborate, where is one of my Um, test models. Uh, this is the Peach Beach course from Mario Kart Double Dash. Got this off the models resource. I find that uh, a lot of these models resource files are good for uh, good for testing things like this. Uh, so here is an entire Peach Beach course. Uh, let's uh, rotate the up axis. And there we have it. Uh, those of you that play Double Dash may think this is fairly familiar. Uh, this object has a number of um, a number of different textures and materials assigned to it. Um, if the material file does point to a uh, to an image texture file that Game Maker can find, it will load it in automatically. And from here, you can play with each and any of the uh, the materials separately. And if you click on one, uh, the vertices in the 3D view that uh, that use that material will be highlighted. 
So that's the uh, the road. This is the sand. Uh, this is the uh, decorations on the road. Um, if you want to see exactly how the textures are mapped, um, you can click the view texture button down here and uh, that will show you the UV mapping. Uh, what was the... Uh, I think that was what it started out as. Those are supposed to be like shine sprites, aren't they? Did this... Uh... Oh no, they're shadows of trees, which were, uh, which were not included in uh, this download because trees are dynamic objects in that game. Anyway, diffuse color of a material isn't automatically uh, baked into the vertex color. And you can play with the, uh, the blending color, the um, blending diffuse material color, if you are interested in doing that. So if you wanted to change these, uh, these shadow regions to uh, blue or green or some other color, you're allowed to do that. And then when you're done, uh, if you want to bake it into the, uh, the vertex color, you do have the option to do that. And now um, these, uh, these tree shadow regions have, uh, have had this magenta purple color. Um, it's really more of like a burgundy baked into the vertex color. Is this mirror backwards? Should I have uh, swapped the hand in this when I did that? Yeah, that looks better. I, I thought... I thought this like this pink arch thing looked like it was in the wrong place from the uh, Mario Kart that I recognize. Anyway, there's some other tools in here. I'm not going to go over all of them. Uh, individual like sub meshes, as I've called them, um, individual pieces of the model, um, which can be imported with a, a different material from a single OBJ, are listed in this sub meshes menu, and you can add or replace or delete them individually if you need to. That, uh, that tends not to usually be necessary for OBJs, I don't think. And there's a couple miscellaneous um, options in, in this window down here. So you can set the normals to smooth or flat. Uh, that is faceted normals, that is smooth normals. Um, you can uh, reset the vertex color of everything, or you can bake the vertex color of, um, of all the materials into the, uh, the vertex color. Didn't look like these smoothed quite enough. So I think I might want to uh, set the threshold for the normal smoothing up to somewhat higher degree value. That's a little better. Anyway, when you're done, you can export the meshes to a particular format. You can export the meshes to um, either a D3D game maker model or a uh, object model of its own. Or, and this is probably the more important part, you can export a, uh, a model to a just a vertex buffer. And that will provide a binary buffer that you can just load into GameMaker real quick. Uh, your exported vertex format that you're using, in case you're using something that is a little bit non-standard besides position, normal texture, and color, can be specified in this window. Not all of these are implemented yet. I haven't gotten around to the tangent and or bitangent uh, vertex attributes. Uh, barycentric is um, implemented, so if you're doing something that requires barycentric coordinates, such as the uh, uh, drawing a wireframe around your 3D models, you can check that. Uh, the ones that I've listed as non-standard are um, just squeezing the same information into a smaller number of bytes to, uh, to minimize the vertex, um, to try to uh, minimize the file size. And I won't get into exactly what data this stores uh, right now. I will have a, a GitHub uh, wiki page linked where I explain that. But most of the time, some combination of position, normal, texture, and color uh, should be fine. At some point in the future, I'd like to add support for uh, like skeletal animation information. Uh, so bone weights and bone indices and stuff, which would be further um, vertex attributes, but I haven't gotten around to that yet. And lastly, if you want to export multiple vertex buffers into a single file, uh, so that maybe if you have a lot of tree objects or a lot of uh, rocks or something like that, and you don't want to have a million um, vertex buffer files cluttering up your game's file system, uh, you can save everything instead as a, uh, a collection. And that will save all of these uh, three 3D models in a single file, and they can be loaded into the game with the Penguin import scripts over here. And again, I will have a more detailed uh, technical documentation on how you use these, uh, how you use those functions, linked in the video description. These are still a work in progress. I'm sure that I will still be uh, fixing issues and making adding additional features and that sort of thing going into the future. If you've been looking for a way to manage 3D models besides just straight up importing all of them into your game as OBJs, 
uh, which is a bit of a time-consuming task to write an OBJ importer and is a, a rather slow process because it involves parsing a lot of text files. I would recommend trying this out and seeing if you can get some use out of it and seeing if it saves you any time. I'm going to end this off here. Uh, hopefully, uh, one, you find this useful, and two, you will be able to actually see what I've been busy with in the last few weeks um, very soon, because I think I'm getting uh, about to the point where I'm um, almost ready to release that to the world. So that's that, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Harold Gidry, Kiexi, Syndra Larson, Square Crow, The Oz, and Zenzerman for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.